let's get Hello everyone, welcome to the Talking Hub podcast. We're back for episode two with our very own Dr. Maha, Dean at the School of Architecture and Interior Design, here to share her inspiring story of the journey in architecture and all the lessons she's learned on the way. Enjoy the episode. Hello, Dr. Maha. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. It's so good to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, First things first, who is Dr. Maha? In one word and why? Okay, it's a passionate woman who cares about what she wants to do. Because I believe that if we have dreams and we have to follow, and we as women, we have a lot of pressure on us. So proving ourselves means we accomplish not just for ourselves, but all the women in the world. All the women. I love that answer. That's a great answer. So I want to ask you, how did you start your journey in architecture? Well, I don't know. Since I wasn't like in a stu- like a child, I wanted to be an architect. I love design. I love painting. I love creativity. I love colors. So I started by uh, entering the architecture department in uh, uh, the University of Baghdad in Iraq, where I was nice. born and I was raised. This was the first step. And then it has been a long journey, five years of undergrad, then the master's degree, then my two PhDs, one from Iraq, wow. one from two United PhDs. Kingdom, yeah, Incredible. and then, yeah, and the long journey included researching, working, teaching, administrative work. Architecture is one of the most, maybe, sophisticated programs to get in and to, to finish and then to continue. Exactly. So you have to be very passionate about what you want to do, you have to be ready to have all the to face all the challenges and all the hard work on the sleepless nights mm-hmm. this is part of the the whole thing but by the end this is a rewarding profession that you feel you accomplish something that you help people you create to make people's life better mm-hmm. this is the reward that you get so you never get tired mm-hmm. You can't give up on your passions at the end. No, and and you know what? Being a creative person and you always think out of the box, I think it gives you this energy to keep on working. doesn't matter your age. You cannot retire as an architect. Mm -hmm. You know that. Maybe some profession. And you know how many architects, they pass their 90, they died in their 90s. And they're still working. Yeah. Oh, wow. Either working and even died like in 96 or 93 or 95. That Means. is so impressive. So really. that's something good just to let the architect, you have a long life. Since yeah. your mind never <laughs> stopped thinking, it never stops. then you have energy to go on in your, your life. Your work becomes your life, I think. And also I think, especially in a creative industry like architecture or anything else creative, it almost doesn't feel like work. Obviously it's difficult and it's it's a long journey, but through your passion, you probably enjoy it so much and you love what you're doing. You don't necessarily feel like it's a task or it's work. And it becomes part of your life. You become yeah. an observer. You look to details. You evaluate everything around. You appreciate everything that you yeah. see. Every chair you, 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 you like, you know, sit on every space that's you get true. in, every color you see. That's true. You will look it differently. Yeah. So that makes your uh, life different, even the way you, maybe even your personality, the way you dress, the way you, you the environment where you live in, your office, everything you're going to see, it will be reflected part of your personality. That's so true. Actually, I even have, you know, a few friends that are in architecture, and when we walk into a room, they're like, you know, I know this used to be a garage. I know this was designed like this before. They can spot everything. Like you said, if it's a chair, a table, a room, they can spot everything like that. It becomes your life, it, you know? Exactly. Um, so you addressed previously that uh, you started your journey in Baghdad and um, I wanted to say that it's so exciting to be speaking to a fellow Iraqi. Uh, I wanted to know how did our culture inspire you in your journey with the likes of Zaha Hadid as your role model? So could you tell me yeah, more that's, about that? That's a very interesting question yeah. and uh, maybe I can tell a short story. Yeah, of Just course. To, because you mentioned Zaha Hadid. Of course, I'm proud to be from the same country that... Not just the Hadid, but all the great, like you know, architects or architecture all over the world from thousands of years. Uh, when I was in UK, like in Canada, when the first time I went to Canada, I was invited by a professor at the University of Toronto, in fact of architecture, to give uh, a speech. And he was introducing me to his fellow, saying, "Next week we're gonna have an like you know, an architect from Iraq. She finished her study in England." And then people, they thought I was a hadith. So it was like, <laughs> like I was proud to, to yeah. be like, you know, related associated to, exactly, with that. Yeah. And just being from the same country. Yeah. And definitely being like born and raised in, in a country with this 
uh, let's say, extent, uh, civilization that extends thousands of years, and you mm-hmm. around it by architecture from the Babylonian and from Assyrian, all this until you see the Islamic architecture, the traditional architecture, mm-hmm. the modern Iraqi architects that you have seen the work of Achadarchi, Muhammad Makia, mm-hmm. um, all these names, like you know, they created not just in Iraq but also in the, in the region. Mm-hmm. This actually inspired me and wanted to be one of these people who can yeah. add or have, like, let's say, leave something. For the coming generations. I love that. That's a, you know, it's the the thought of just you being Iraqi by name made an entire department assume that you're Zaha Hadid. It's such an honor, and it's you know you you feel proud to be associated with such incredible names. And, and I'm and always proud, yeah. like always proud that I finished my undergrad and like you know my master degree in in Iraq, and this mm-hmm. is where I was born. And I'm I'm so proud that even when I went to Canada, when I had some interviews with uh, or becoming a director there for a program. They had interviewed me. I was always mentioning that this is where I finished my master degree and my undergrad. This is my origin. So I always yeah. mentioned I'm proud to have, and this is what made me. I wouldn't be in Canada. I wouldn't succeed yeah. in all the whole journey without re- referring that to where I was born. Yeah, of course. And how we, they make us strong and want to follow our dream Definitely. and, and like do whatever we want to do. on to you know you were speaking about Canada and you've spent uh, most of your career in Canada so I want to know what did you learn during this experience it was very like difficult like transition because you go to country where you already built a history in other parts of the world and then you have to start a totally new life in another country with different culture but the good thing in Canada is a very open um, uh, let's say country when they they respect diversity it's very and, diverse yeah, yes. and they encourage like keeping your culture since you are become part of the respect the values of the of the canadian uh, society mm-hmm. and that's what i try to prove myself by keeping my culture mm-hmm. but at the same time uh, go along with it so what i learned there from canada actually it is where people uh, in addition to uh, like respecting others mm-hmm. respecting diversity repressing like i can be different than you are in any way but i still can we can live together mm-hmm. that's something very important i have learned there mm-hmm. there also you have learned if you have a dream and you want to to, to approve something then you can do it if you have passion mm-hmm. and you follow the right routes and you fight you're going to fulfill your dreams. And I could see I have been professor there and then became a director of an interior design program mm-hmm. in a big university. So I, and I think that was um, let's say an evidence that whatever you are, the way you look, mm-hmm. what is your color, what is your background, what is your religion, mm-hmm. if you go with the values of surrounding and work hard, you're going to get one and get the respect of everyone. And this will add to your background or culture. People, yes. they always say, she's Iraqi Canadian. Doesn't matter how Canadian I became, yes. I'm still Iraqi well, and I'm still Iraqi this Canadian. Yes, yes yeah. of course. You're always going to have your roots. And I think, you know, you know, the foundation of all of this is definitely hard work. And even taking that step to move to a completely different country, you always feel like probably you have to prove yourself 10 times more than the Canadians there and 10 times more than the people who have been there longer than you because you are different but it's so wonderful to hear that you were accepted and you know you were one of one of them you know um and I think this would be lovely for people listening I think it's it's very encouraging if people had worries and anxieties about maybe relocating as an Arab moving to the west wanting to expand their career they would probably understand through this that if you take that first step and you challenge yourself, work hard and be passionate, everything will work out for you, I think. Exactly. And yeah. I think, I don't know, but like I have someone who has been appointed as a diversity consultant in the same university where I was. Mm-hmm. And then she said one of her inspiration to accept the job in the university mm-hmm. because she has seen my photo, like, you know, on the website and said, oh, like people from different cultures, like they can have or be recognized in this university and, succeed. and then ex- I succeed and so she said this is one of the reasons why she accepted to work there mm-hmm. and again as you said I, I we had like maybe more diverse student demography even faculty mm-hmm. because they saw oh there is if someone is heading this program mm-hmm. is from different that they could prove themselves and then also they can do it so that's was yeah I feel happy that or like let's say proud that you could inspire others and let them stick to their culture mm-hmm. 
mm. at the same time they can succeed. How would you compare that experience to your now experience in Dubai? Uh, in Dubai it's like it's it's a dream city. Everyone wants to come to Dubai and I have been here like as in before moving to Canada I have lived like in the Arab Emirates and I know Dubai but definitely whenever you visit Dubai like it's a new it's a new something new is happening. So definitely it is one of the most amazing multicultural places in the world. And I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to, especially as an art from architecture standpoint, seeing all these interesting buildings and being here like in the city walk makes the experience much more even exciting than I expected. I know that I want to bring like, you know, all my extensive experience that I had because then I tell them I'm a professor before I became a dean. So I know what happened in classrooms and I always believe in student engagement. I always believe that in student participation always try to believe to have like a positive environment and engage mm-hmm. students and make them understand why they are doing this and how this be useful to them when upon their graduation and always to bring the industry and the what's going to happen there to their classrooms to be prepared mm-hmm. when they graduate there is like one specific message that you would want to instill in your students and would want them to take away after leaving education what would that be first of all they would never stop chasing their dreams whatever they think they can do they 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 will be able to do if they work hard for it and they look if it doesn't happen today it might happen tomorrow it might happen after a year 10 years so never stop dreaming and because I have been in different countries, I can tell I have been different continents, like with the, uh, the whole thing, but I could prove. So never stop chasing your dreams and take the most that you can get from your university life because this is what remains. All the sleepless nights and the hard work you will forget, you will only remember the good memories and the activities you've done and the trips and the engagement. So I encourage them to get engaged as much as possible because now the industry wants people who are engaged and they can express themselves, they can promote their work and they can prove themselves just beyond the just getting high grades. So mm-hmm. that's my my message. Follow your dream. Yeah. Follow and your star. It will all be worth it in the end, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, it all will be. If the listeners could take one thing away from this conversation, if, if you could only, you know, send them home or, you know, have them remember one thing from this conversation, what would it be? Love what you do mm-hmm. and you will get where you want to be been so nice talking to you um thank you so so much for being here i've i've loved our conversation i feel like i've personally learned so much from you so uh thank you so much and uh, we'll see you very soon thank you very much for having me i really enjoyed your questions were so amazing and out of the box and that's what made me answer them that spontaneous I'm so glad. thank you very I'm glad. much it's, it's a space for creativity so uh, yeah it's been wonderful thank and, you uh, thank you Dr. Maha thank you Thanks.